morning. We have been in this cast of Christmas series uh, for the last few weeks, and we've looked at the prophets, we've looked at the angels, uh, we've looked at the shepherds. Today we're looking at the magi. And so we've had a different family kind of uh, read some scripture to us. So last week was Ted Spencer, and now we have the Beard family that are going to share some scripture. Would you welcome them this morning? All right. Good morning, everyone. Merry Christmas. Uh, may I first say uh, that God surely delivered this man from a body of death. I was for sure a condemned sin in the flesh, and I just want to say thank you, God, for saving a wretch like me that I can stand in front of the church today and read the gospel. Nice. Chief, baby. Good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas. Um, I'm going to read Matthew 2, 1 and 2. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the, the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from Easter, Easter lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the, of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. All right. Psalm 150, 1 through 6, and this is called Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with a blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with lyre and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with a loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Technical difficulties. <laughs> John 4, 24. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Thus saith the Lord, and may God administer a blessing on these words and sow them into their hearts, our hearts, so that we, we may share them with others. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great job, guys. Look, all good. All good. All good. Thank you, this Pastor. is a big deal getting them in front of everybody. It's a big deal. You guys did a great job. Great, great job. So here we are this morning uh, looking at the Magi, and so we're going to dig in here a little bit, um, just adoration and worship, and I hope uh, even Psalm 150, just recognizing the power of that. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. What have we been doing this morning? We've been praising the Lord, right? And we've been doing it with a lot of different instruments, and, and uh, we had Sean on the drums over here, you know? I mean, how old is Sean? 13 years old, you know? Isn't that awesome? That's so cool, so cool. So we've got, we had the trumpet back here uh, as well today. So we don't have any leers, and I don't even know what that thing looks like, honestly. I'd have to Google that thing to even see what it looks like. But we're, we are busy, right, with these lives praising God. And it, it's not a show. Um, this is heartfelt worship. This is worshiping in spirit and in truth, which means for real. Okay, we, we, we have been made in God's image. We have a spirit, and we're worship, worshiping the Holy Spirit, and we get to do that today, and we get to do it honestly wherever we are. It's not a 10 a.m. thing on Sunday, right? Anybody here today, right? It's, it's, I'm just checking. I'm going to see if you're here today. Right? This, this is not a Sunday 10 a.m. thing. This is, this is a living and breathing. Every breath comes from who? Comes from God. Every breath that we have comes from God. He created us. He's the one who gave us uh, breath. He's the one who gave us life. So um, this morning, we're going to talk a little bit about worship. Uh, first here, what have we found ourselves worshiping in this life? What are some things that we have found ourselves worshiping, spending all of our time, our energy, and our focus uh, doing? What are some of those things? Anything come to your mind? Internet, yeah, you know, that one wasn't around, right? 
Man, you remember, remember pre-internet days? Remember pre-cell phone days? You know, remember the payphone? I'm just saying, you know, we even had songs about it. Here's a quarter, call someone who cares. You know what I'm saying? Kind of a thing. We don't, we, don't, we don't do that anymore, right? So here, the internet, sure. Um, I, I got to tell you personally that, that I deleted Facebook off my phone, and, and it was just one of those things where I just was like, man, I, I, that's, that's too much of a distraction for me. I have too many other things that I want to focus on. So I'm not saying I don't look at it at all. I'm just saying I don't have it on my phone, so it's not as easily accessible to me. What are the things... What are the things do we worship? We find ourselves worshiping in this life. Your phone, phone? okay. Yeah, what what else? Money, right? What else? Spouse, okay, what else? Things, things in general. What else? I missed a few. Cars, careers, right? Lots of different things that we find ourselves worshiping. What about power? You know, uh, the, you're, someone mentioned career, but like the stepping up and, and like attaining whatever that is, right? Moving up the career ladder, gaining, gaining power, gaining authority. Uh, we've all been around the security guard that should never have been given any power, right? right? You're like, no, 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 no. Okay, you only get a whistle, okay, right? So, I mean, this, this idea of, of power, uh, position. What about approval? Have you ever been in the in in the mindset where you recognize you were like worshiping people's approval? And I, I know growing up, you know, I wanted my dad's approval, and uh, so you know. But there was that teenager thing in me too, right? That kind of fought that thing, you know. And so dad would say mow the grass, and I was like, okay, I'll mow the grass. But he wanted diagonal lines, you know, kind of like vacuuming. You know what I'm talking about? You know the nice little lines in the in the carpet. Some of you guys might might like as you vacuum. I don't know, but th- that was that was my dad, right? You know, so I didn't want to do diagonal lines. What did I wanted to do? What I want to do? I want I wanted circles. You know, I was gonna I was gonna do circles, and so my dad's like, "Okay, no more lawnmower for you." Woo! Said the teenager. Right? Because I wasn't doing it my dad's way, but I, I wanted his approval, though. Right? And so we can get in this, this worshiping of pe- people's approval. Who, who's geared that way? Who, who recognizes that in them? They, they want approval. That, that, that was me. What else do we worship in this life? What are some things that we, that we worship? Somebody mentioned money. That's good. Praise from people. Right? Getting, getting that praise, it's like, oh, stop, 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 don't, don't say that. Right? Yeah, different things that we can worship. What about sports? Now, it, it, if you're a Redskins fan, you're not, you're not, you're not hurting in this area. Yeah. There's always next year. Okay? But, yeah, but, but worshiping sports, worshiping these things with our life. Here, here's the deal. Now, if you, if you find that you have an issue in any of the areas that we've talked about already, can I tell you something? It's not all your fault. You are wired to worship. God has created you to worship. He's created you to worship. What, what the difference is, is we have a choice in what we worship. Do you understand? We, we have a choice on what we focus on, what, what we give our all to. And just like anything, okay, there's, there, because we have, we're wired to do that, we can be drawn to worship the wrong things. We're wired to worship. And so the big idea this morning is this, our life is our worship unto God. This life that God has given us, this breath that we've already talked about, you know, when we come back to Scripture and we're, we're looking at Scripture, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I know you want to say it. So praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise God. This life that God has given us is to worship Him, to give Him our focus and our attention, that He would be the center 
of everything that happens. So it's, it's, it's okay to have our sports stuff. It's okay to have bank accounts. It's okay to have all these things. But, but our worship, our focus, our, we shouldn't be consumed with those things. We should be consumed with what or who? With God. We should be consumed with our Lord. The Lord our Lord should be the center of everything we do. So we're going to look at these, these wise men. Uh, we find out that they're actually, they were astrologers, okay? So if you look at, at the history a little bit, the wise men weren't, you know, kings. And we've got, we've got all sorts of stories and things. And we've got songs, we three kings of Orient. Are, you know, we've got these things, right, that, that we think, you know, we kind of get in our mind kind of a thing. But then we have the truth, Right, and we have what actually happened. But these wise men, they weren't they weren't kings, but they were actually astrologers, and they were from where? From the east, right? I mean, we we don't know we don't know exactly like where exactly they came from. There's there's oh you know one came from China. I don't know, you know. So we've got these ideas, but we know from scripture they came uh, from. The east, and it's believed that they did travel thousands of miles following a star, some heavenly object that, that was illuminated in the sky. We know from Scripture a star, but they followed that thing for thousands of miles. They weren't uh, referred to as followers of Christ. They were actually not believers, okay, from what we understand, not God-fearers. But at the same time, they saw something, and they'd heard about Jesus. And so uh, they're watching the sky, and they, they see the star, and they're following uh, the star. And they may have studied some Old Testament manuscripts that, that pointed them uh, to Jesus. And they may have even had a supernatural message from God as well. I mean, these are things that we don't really know. We can only kind of, kind of speculate and, and kind of look at. Uh, how many wise men were there? We three kings. <laughs> no, I mean, wait, right? We, we think, oh, there, there must have been three. Now, why would we think there were three? There were three gifts, right? It makes sense. Three gifts, three kings, three, three wise men, three astrologers. I mean, we, 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 kind, of, we kind of guess at it. We don't know. Uh, for sure, but it kind of makes sense. There was three gifts, so, you know, there's got to be three. Well, there's some, you know, idea that there might have been as many as 12 uh, that, that came. So we don't really know. Uh, what about Jesus? Was he in the manger? So when we got this nice little cute nativity that you might have at your house, right, and you've got, you've got who do you usually have? You usually have Mary and Joseph and of course, Jesus in the manger, right? And you might have an angel in there as well. And you might, you have some shepherds, right? And certainly you have some cattle, right? And, and maybe a lamb or two, right in there. And then what else do you have? Donkey, okay, then what else? Baby Jesus, that's good, that's good. The wise men. And usually you have in that nativity, you have the wise men. But realistically, they weren't there. So Jesus was probably one or two years old when they, when they finally showed up. And so they, they were probably in Bethlehem. There was no manger, you know, there was no stable kind of a deal. But, but you know, we've got these pictures and they look good, right? Don't, don't they look good on your house, you know, when you've got your nativity and everything? But realistically, uh, Jesus was no longer in the manger uh, at that time. Okay, well, that was kind of fun. Here we go. So, um, something else here. Psalm 7211 says this, and it's not on the PowerPoint slide. Uh, Psalm 7211 says this All kings will bow before him, and all nations will serve him. Okay, and so this is kind of one of the scriptures that, that bring us into uh, these were kings, okay? And just kind of making that connection with Psalm All kings will bow before him, and all nations will serve him. Uh, will serve him. But uh, they weren't necessarily kings, they were astrologers. Okay, so here we are, Matthew 2, uh, reading 1 through 12, and Veronica read a couple of these verses already here, but we're going to read them again. 
Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to what? To worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you do, or when you find him, come back and tell me so that I may go and worship him too. Is that what he really wanted to do? Okay, you guys have read this before. Okay. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was, which we found out what is not the manger, right? When they saw the star, they were filled with joy, filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word today. Thank you for the opportunity to continue to learn from you, God. Lord, you have plans and purposes, God, for our families, for everyone that is here, God, and we thank you that we can look back to your word 2,000 years ago, and it still speaks to us today. It still guides us today. So, Lord, open our eyes and our ears. May we see and hear from you today, we pray. In Jesus' name, and everyone said... Amen. Amen. So we're answering this question today. How can we worship our king? How can we worship our king? Just learning from the Magi here, learning from the Magi. The first thing is this, is to keep looking for Jesus to show up in your day. Okay? Keep looking for Jesus to show up uh, in your day. We have a lot of distractions in this life and in this world, right? Right? Lots of things that distract us. We talked about some of that today. Remember, we're wired to worship, so we have these things that kind of can pull us here and there. Distractions. Someone mentioned a cell phone, and I don't know if you've seen any of these videos of people walking with their cell phone. And like walking into pools and falling down stairs. And I think ones in New York, there's like a basement that's opened, opened up. You know how like in New York, they have the kind of outside the, on the street level, they have the doors that open up and they go down into the, the lower level of the business or whatever. So someone's on the cell phone and they didn't see that thing and literally tumble right into, uh, into that. Anyhow, you'll be Googling, Googling it later uh, t- to see it. But these distractions, right? I mean, and these guys are focused. I, I mean, I even saw one where someone got hit by a car because they, they were walking across the street. They didn't look. They didn't look. We have lots of distractions. See, the Magi or the astrologers, they were not distracted. Can you imagine the focus here? They were focused. They were looking for Jesus. They were looking for him to show up. Now, Somehow they knew Jesus was special. Like we said, they, they might have had a divine revelation. There could have been Old Testament manuscripts that, um, that had been around at that time that helped guide them along. I, it, it's, it's amazing. It just shows you the attraction of Jesus, okay, even in our day. Even this season, as many cultural distractions that there are, there's still something that's just absolutely amazing about the Christmas season. Do you feel that? It's a little harder for us to feel it in our culture, in our crazy culture, 
But when we focus on Jesus, everything changes. Scripture says he inhabits the praise of his people. Okay, there's something powerful about Jesus. We see it in our world today. We also see it right here with these astrologers looking, these wise men looking. They were, they were focused. They were focused. Where is the newborn king, this newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. We've come a long way. We've come to worship him. This, this focus that they had. They were looking for Jesus, and are we looking for Jesus to show up today? Are we looking for him today? As we've talked from the beginning of this series, we can walk through this season and completely miss what it's all about. We could, we could go into Tuesday and Wednesday. We could go into these, these special times with family, and you could open up your giga, giga, whatever, I mean, gift, right? The, the most amazing gift, like the thing that you wanted, right? You could open that thing up and totally blow through this season and completely miss the reason, right? Even, even here today, going through the motions, I mean, many of you have given your life to Jesus. You are you're Christ followers, amen? Amen. Right? Many, many here today are Christ followers, and we could go through this season and miss Christ. We could miss him. We don't want to miss him. But it's so much more than December 25th. We can miss him every day. Are we looking for Jesus to show up in our lives? Are you looking for him to show up every day? as you're living this life. We don't know exactly what is going to happen every day, but our God does, right? He knows everything that is going to happen. So expecting him to show up, uh, when we intentionally see the Lord, when we intentionally expect him to show up, when, when we have this anticipation, uh, the opportunities even to see God's goodness, Right? Are, are, they're, they're more evident to see his blessings. Our praise, all right, our praise, our focus on Jesus opens the door to so much more in this life. It makes it a whole lot harder for us to miss the Lord when we actually are anticipating, God, what are you going to do today? Lord, I'm, I'm anticipating you to guide me today. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Right, God, I, I'm looking, I'm I'm looking for you to be in the conversation that I'm going to have. You know, as we as we look through our calendar for the day, and we see the meetings that are coming up, and we begin to go, God, guide me in that conversation. Lord, help me in that interaction there. God, I don't know what to say in this meeting. Please, Lord, I'm I'm expecting you to guide my conversation. I'm expecting you. Our praise opens up the door to so much more. Psalm 100 verse 4 says this, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and praise his name. And here we come to this season and Brian led us in, Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Focusing on Jesus. Jesus changes absolutely everything. I've asked Carmel to come and share uh, just for a minute uh, just on some of the things that the Lord has done in her life over the last month or so. Can you give her a hand? You got to give a longer hand because she's still got to come. She's still got to (laughs) come. Keep it going, keep it going. <laughs> here, I'll bring you right out here. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. So I'm really nervous. So 
And when Pastor Andy texted me and said, would you like to share? I was going <laughs> <laughs> to the phone, you know. And I was like, <laughs> I said, sure, because I have been very blessed. I'm a single mom, and I had, am blessed to have my mother still alive with me. And she's amazing, and I'm glad to have her because she's a praying mom. And she taught me how to pray. And I was down before I came to South County. I had surgery on my neck. I didn't know how I was going to move around or how I was going to get around, how I was going to take care of my kids. And my kids were coming here with Shauna. She's not here today, but she they kept coming. She was coming. My daughter started going to youth, and everybody started knowing Cameron. And Cameron's like, Mom, you have to come. When your neck is better, you got to come to church. And I said, okay. I made her that promise, and I came. And just the love and the joy and the peace that it, it brought me to come to church gave me the power to pray more, to have more faith that, you know, I'm not in this by myself. <laughs> and in this last month, in this last two months, I felt I was working hard, um, being blessed to car share with my mom and my sister. And I was like, going to exchange cars and just standing there on the phone, thinking I was on the bottom stair. I was not. <laughs> and one of the kids said, Mom, and I turned and fell forward. And I heard my ankle go, Ksh! and in my head, nothing but doubt. I was like, oh, my God, Lord, what am I going to do now? I just got the hours I prayed for. How am I going to, you know, I'm, in my head, I had it all planned out. I'm going to go put this money in the bank, and I'm going to go get a car, and I'm going to do this. And in the, all in a while, God had it all worked out. So I took that as his time for me to slow down. And my son, who has been best friends with a, a kid in his school since kindergarten, due to a tragedy, for the, it was a tragedy for them, but a blessing for me. The um, father took his own life, and they had to move. And the mom decided to sell the house, you know, so that the kids wouldn't have to live with those memories. And one day she walked up to me, and she says to me, Carmel, the house on my cell is, uh, the sale of my house is final. Start looking for a car. And I looked at her, like, what? Me? <laughs> you talking to me? Little old me, like, what? <laughs> and every day until we found the car that I have now, which is outside, and I'm so thankful. She sent me a picture of a car. Do you like this one? Do you like this one? And I was like, uh, no, you know. And she kept going, and she every day until we went, we were going to see a guy about a car. And he was like, oh, I can't do it today. She said, let's go to CarMax. And we get in there, and they tell us a whole bunch of hoopla. You know, oh, you got to, you know, you got to put this down, and you got to have this much credit. And we're like, nah. So as we called, we saw the car, she got excited. And the guy was like, come today. And so the day as the day went on, you know, she started to get busy and I started to get busy. The kids were getting out of school and the guy was like, oh no, don't worry, take your time. I'm gonna be there, I'll meet you. And we went, we took a friend just to be, you know, we're two girls, we're like, we're not going to you know, meet another guy. We made robbers. <laughs> we, <laughs> we took God and another friend with us. <laughs> so, um, I say that to say that you never know what God has in store for you, and you don't ha you're not alone. As long as you believe and you follow through with God, every day is a blessing. I'm healed. I didn't have to have any surgery, thank God. I am able to go back to where I started back to work this week, and whew, I forgot how busy that was. Old people are no joke. <laughs> 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 and I just want to say thank you to South County for always praying for my family, always keeping us lifted in prayer. Not one day while my, I was out, my kids never missed a meal because of this family, this church family, my own family, and I'm thankful to you all. Thank you for being in my corner, and thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. We love you, lady. We do. <laughs> yeah. We're big fans. <clears throat> How many weeks were you out of work? Um, six. Wow. Six. Here, I'm going to get you. All right. I'm going to do that every step you have now so that you don't fall. Keeping our eyes open. Um, The Lord knows where you are, and as we serve him, as we give him our life, and we make him uh, the center of everything that we do, uh, 
Six weeks without work is a big deal. I think it's, uh, if Brett was to tell me how many people live paycheck to paycheck, 75%? A little higher than that? Yeah. Uh, and, and so for, to go through that with your family and uh, just to see God's blessing and then, you know, at the end of it, even get a car out of it. Right? Praise God. Isn't that awesome? Give God some praise. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. So we can worship our king, all right? We worship our king um, by focusing on him and expecting him to show up. We can also do this, okay? We can bring our gifts to Jesus. Bring our gifts uh, to Jesus. You know, all, right now it's all about uh, gifts, right, and things, but bringing our gifts to Jesus each day. Have you ever showed up to a party and you realized you didn't bring your gift? Maybe, maybe, you thought, maybe you thought your parents got the gift, or maybe you thought your spouse got the gift, and, and you're thinking, oh, you know, you, you, you got the gift, don't you? No, I didn't get the gift. Did you get the gift? Right? I mean, it's a little awkward, right? Embarrassing. We forgot the gift. Um, the Magi didn't forget their gifts, okay? This, this is absolutely amazing uh, to me. Because uh, these astrologers weren't, they weren't coming just to check things out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like Cindy, the, Cindy and I this week, we saw a fire truck go by. And so, uh, I don't know if you're weird like me, but I'm like, hey, there's a fire truck. We should go follow it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, what was I doing? I was checking things out, you know? This is my community. I own this community. <laughs> Anyhow. You know, I do love this community. But anyhow, but I saw the fire truck go, and I'm like, hey, let's go, let's go see, you know. Let's go see where this is and what's happening. It was, it was a fire off at 123 and whatnot. But I was going to check, I was going to check that out, right? The, the, the Magi weren't going to check things out. They were going to worship, right? They were going to worship. They were all in. They were intent on worshiping Jesus, and they were bringing him what? They were bringing him gifts. Matthew 2, uh, verse 10 says this, When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with its mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened what? Their treasure chests. Now, look, in my mind, you know, maybe it's from being military and whatnot, you know, I think of these big chests or whatever, and you know, that, that being heavy and, and falling down. But they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Okay? They didn't bring Jesus a Chia pet. You know? They didn't bring their pet rock. They didn't be like, oh, wait a minute, we should probably have a gift. You know, they're like reaching in their pocket kind of thing. Do you got that Starbucks gift card? We could give them that, you know. We haven't used that yet. They, they, they brought gifts. They were intent on worshiping, worshiping the Lord. And they didn't bring these little low-value things. It's like, you know, for those that, you know, are married here, you know, your, the, your fiancé gives you a ring, right, Ladies? I mean, you get a ring, and, and it doesn't come out of the 25 cent, right, at the shoppers, you know, you know what I'm talking about, the little vending machines, you know, it doesn't come out of that thing. I mean, that probably would not get you a yes, but you get a ring, and, and what does it have? It has value. It has value, and the Magi brought gifts of, of value. They were high-value items, gold frankincense, like, like perf perfume, and myrrh, right? So they brought these things, and they weren't just little run-of-the-mill stuff. Like, they didn't go to CVS for that stuff. I'm, I'm talking about this was high-value, high-value gifts that they brought. They were bringing to their king. They were all in. They were all in. But it wasn't just the gifts. It was the sacrifices for the journey as well. Okay, this, this was a really big deal. 
I mean, can you imagine, they didn't call an Uber. It wasn't comfy. I mean, can you imagine the dust? Anybody who's been uh, traveling in the desert, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I can remember being in the desert in Saudi Arabia, and I could literally do a 360, and all I saw was sand. And there were places where the sand was so fine that it was like a moonwalk. Not that I've been on the moon, but I've seen pictures, okay? So, so literally, you'd put your foot down, and you could put it down really, really, really lightly. You could put it down like this, and it still would be so fine that it would poof. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Some of you have been there, I know. But yeah, it would just, I mean, can you imagine the dust, how nasty, the sacrifices that they made, traveling thousands of mile, miles on whatever animals, camels, whatever, can you imagine? These guys were all in. And it wasn't just about the high value gifts that they brought. I mean, this was the sacrifices they made for the journey. They were coming to worship Jesus. So my question to you this morning is, what are the gifts that we are bringing to Jesus in this life? Sometimes we like the comfort, right? We like the pleasure, we like the comfort, we like all these things. Um, we, we don't want to sacrifice nothing. Some, sometimes we feel that way, right? We, we are looking for comfort, but what are we bringing to Jesus? What are some of the gifts we bring to our Lord? You know, we know our time, our resources, our abilities, our focus, but I want to suggest to you that our very lives are gifts unto God. Our very lives, every breath that we have is a gift that we bring to Jesus. Romans 12, 1 says this, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies, to give your what? Your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy, there's that word again, sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. This is truly the way to worship him. This is not on the PowerPoint, and I always make that disclaimer because I don't want Cindy looking for it, okay? But uh, Romans 12, if you go down a little bit further, verses 6 through 8, it says this, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage, how many encouragers out there? Well, there's a few, okay. <laughs> yeah, we gotta work on that one. Uh, Lord, send more. If, if your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If your gift is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you, you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Romans 12, 6 through 8. These gifts, this gift of life and these gifts that God has given us, we get to use for his honor and his glory. Scripture talks about the cost of of following Jesus. We have people all over the world that are paying heavily, they're paying with their very lives. We don't hear about that here, but there is a cost to following Jesus. Someone in this place has talked about the fear of the sneer is about all that we fear here at times. But Matthew 16, 24 through 26 is this. If any of you wants to be my follower, who wants to be a follower of Jesus? The same, okay? If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but to lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? But I got all this stuff. Nothing is worth your soul. Nothing is worth it. So we bring all of our gifts to Jesus each day. And our, our gift, honestly, is, is this. God, what do you want to, to use this for today? 
God, I'm following you with my life. I, I want you to use this today. I, Lord, I know it's going to be a battle. Lord, I know I'm going to be... I'm going to be wanting comfort. I'm going to be wanting pleasure. I'm going to be wanting all these things. I, I want to watch my show on Netflix. Or, oh, I want to watch that new Disney Plus. I want to, but God, God, I want to use this for your honor and your glory. I don't want to miss out on worshiping you with this life. I want you to be the center. Is, is this anyone's prayer today? God, I want you to be the center of my life. I want to give you all of this, all of my gifts, every, every tool, every resource, every car, whatever it is, God, I want to use that for your honor and your glory. So we bring our gifts to Jesus each day. The last thing we'll look at is this. How can we worship our king? Be wise in all of our interactions. Be wise in all of our interactions. So just just give you a little behind the scenes look. So we have these cues for the worship team. And so when I said be wise, they're all just like, got up. <laughs> you know. You guys are good. Those cues work. Man, oh man. Be wise in all of your interactions. How many of you know that God has a plan? He has purposes for your life. There's things that he's planned well in advance. Before the foundation of the world, he knew you. We don't live like that sometimes, isn't that true? We're not living that way. You know, sometimes we're just focused on the one day in front of us. But to recognize that Jesus has planned things well in advance for your life, and they're good things. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. We've got to figure out what that plan is, right? But if God has a plan for our life, do you know that the enemy does too? And the enemy uses people, Satan uses people as well to try to direct your life and try to accomplish his plans. That's what the enemy does, right? So Jesus came to give life and life to the fullest, John 10.10 10 says, but the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he, what he does, and so um, the wise men didn't know the intentions of King Herod, right? They were just looking for Jesus. They'd just come a long distance, and, and I don't know what that looked like. You know, honestly, you know, like I said, they, it wasn't like they Ubered there or got this nice limo to bring them there. I mean, they, this was like an incredible journey, and so they're probably dragging their tail in there to even meet with King Herod. You know, this has been a long journey, tiring journey, but they were focused on worshiping Jesus. They were focusing, focusing on finding him and worshiping him. And so here they didn't know the intentions of King Herod. They didn't understand, but God warned them in a dream. God gave them a dream. Matthew 2.12 says, When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Not to return. How about us today? Are we wise in our interactions? Are we seeking God's direction as we go about our day, as we meet people? Are we wise about how we, how we spend our time and who we spend it with? Not everybody has the greatest intentions Proverbs 13, 20 says, walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Not everybody has the best intentions. And so are we wise? Are we wise about who we're with, who we spend time with? Thankfully, the wise men had a dream. And they didn't, they didn't just act like, oh, that was a weird dream. And just go about their day. We had a moment in the Casper house where Cindy had a dream, and uh, this is stuff that doesn't happen in our house uh, very often, but uh, Cindy had a dream that we were bringing Timothy home, and uh, I thought, oh, well, that's nice. We shouldn't have pizza the night before. That gives you bad dreams or something, you know? What, what, what is up with that? I, I mean, I, I, I kind of dismissed it, and through that dream... 
God prepared us to receive Timothy into our home. We adopted Timothy when he was 10. And uh, Cindy has this dream before we went out to Washington State that we were bringing Timothy home. And I was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> I wasn't really listening. <laughs> but then when we got out to Washington State, we're getting ready to go up, Mount Saint, go up to see Mount St. Helens. If, you're, you know, if you've been out in that area, it's always kind of a crapshoot, you know, whether you're actually going to see the mountain or anything. And so we're at the base, and it's all foggy and everything. And, and uh, we're getting ready to go up to see if we can see Mount St. Helens. And my, my mom calls me, and she says, uh, you're not going to believe this, but uh, Timothy's social worker just called and wants to know if you guys are open to adopting him. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> Tell him, looking at Cindy, and I'm telling her that, and Cindy's like, I had that dream. God can use dreams. He can use dreams. Don't dismiss every dream that you have. There's probably a lot you need to dismiss. <laughs> But uh, God can use dreams, and he certainly did in this, in this instance. Uh, he led those wise men and um, protected his plans. And God wants to pr protect you and your family, wants to protect his plans that he has planned for you uh, as well. And so we need to be wise in all of our interactions. Scripture tells us, in Matthew 10, verse 16, it says, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise. Be what? Be wise. Be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Colossians 4, 5 through 6, we just went through a big series in Colossians, right? Colossians 4, 5 through 6. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace. Season with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone. Be wise. Be wise. Are we wise in our interactions? Ephesians 5.10, I've thought of this verse so many times. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. As you are entering the season with your relatives and family, be wise. Be wise. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Don't go by your feelings. Be led by the Spirit. Lord, lead me by your Spirit today. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, God, my feelers are off today. Some, I can't tell you how many times I've prayed that prayer. God, my feelers are off today. I don't feel right today, but God, I know that you have a will and a purpose, and I know, God, you have a plan. You want to use me today. My feelers are off. Be wise. Be wise. Be wise in all of our interactions. This is how we worship our king. It shows that he is our focus. Jesus, you're my focus today. Jesus, I'm going to follow you today. Jesus, I don't want to miss you today. So as we close today, what has your attention in this life? The Magi were focused. They were willing to make all the sacrifices uh, to find Jesus, and they were following a star. And uh, I don't know if you've seen something like this lately, but when I was a kid, sometimes they would shine a spotlight into the sky, right? So maybe J.C. Penney was having a sale, you know? <laughs> and uh, so they'd shine this spotlight. And the whole idea was to draw attention so that you would, like Andy following the fire truck, you, know, you, would, you would go find that thing. You'd find what, what is happening wherever that is. And I'm convinced that the Lord has lots of spotlights, things that he is trying to draw our attention to. The first thing is him, but he has a will, a purpose, he has a plan and the enemy wants to make sure you're off of that plan, but God is trying to draw you into his presence. Just like even right now, he's trying to draw us into his presence because he has a purpose. He has a purpose. There's many things that capture our attention in this life. 
We've talked about many of them today. Stock market, bank account. Some of us, it's living vicariously through our kids. Work, the next vacation. Crafting your body. I mean, there's all sorts of things that we can get caught up in. And I'm telling you, here we are at the Christmas season in particular. Well, I want to draw the focus back to Jesus. Would you stand with me? I want to draw the attention back to Jesus. Jesus, we long to worship you. Jesus, we want to worship you today. We want to follow you today with our lives. Who, who here today, that's your, that's your goal today. You want to follow the Lord with your life. You want to follow him. He wants our worship. If you have kids today, they're watching you and what you do. They are watching what you do. They are watching who you're focused on. They're watching what's important to you. Don't you hate this? <laughs> like, don't watch me. Sometimes we get frustrated with ourselves and the things that we are consumed with pursuing. So when we bring it back, and we're, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. My life I want to live a life that's surrendered to you, God. Our kids are watching us. We want to be faithful to him. We want to be faithful to our God. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for these examples that we have. God, I I know we don't know the rest of the story. We don't understand or we don't have all the details of what exactly happened. But in my mind's eye, as I look at these wise men, I see them finding you, Jesus, and their hearts being drawn to you and them worshiping you and forever being changed. And when they had that dream and they followed your direction, God, they went home and they spread this amazing news about Jesus. And the places that they came from, God, were never the same. In my mind's eye, I can't, you know, I don't have that for certain. But in my mind's eye, that's what I imagine. And God, I believe that right here, right now, as we surrender our lives to you, that God, you want to take each of us After an encounter with you, you want to take each of us back to our families and that our families would never be the same. Our neighborhoods would never be the same. When we go back to work, oh, that dreaded work sometimes, right? When we go back to that work, that we would go back full of the Spirit and lives would never be the same. I want to just give an opportunity here with heads bowed and eyes closed. If you need to make things right with Jesus or you need to follow him with your life today, if you just raise your hand where you're at and I'll include you in this prayer today. Anyone else today? You want to follow Jesus with your life? Maybe your relationship with the Lord is off today and you recognize that and you want to make it right. Who else today? You want to make your relationship with Jesus right? say, I'm going to follow you, Lord, with my life. Thank you for your hand. Anybody else today? That you would never be the same and your family would never be the same as well. It's all about Jesus, bringing it back to Jesus. Lord, we love you today. We thank you for what you're doing today. You are King. You are Lord. As we get ready to enter Christmas with our family, God, we can't see everything that's going to happen, but we know that you're already there. You see the beginning from the end, and God, you're there, so we're asking, Lord, for you to give us wisdom as we enter this season. We thank you for what you're going to do. If you raised your hand today, or maybe even today you knew you should raise your hand, and for some reason something kept you from doing it, Right here, right now, you can give your heart to Jesus. Just say, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me of all of my sins. I choose to follow you. If that's you today, tell him that.
I choose to follow you with my life. The wise men were following a star to find you. I, I'm following you. I'm saying I'm going to follow you, Jesus. I'm going to follow you with my life today. We thank you, God, for what you're going to accomplish. As you, as people make you Lord and Savior of their life. We thank you, God, for all you're going to do. We thank you for this week of celebration, God. May it be special times in each of our families, God, as we're drawn closer to you and closer to each other. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our ministry team's going to come. Brian's going to lead us through a congregational song. And then there'll be an opportunity for you to receive prayer today. Uh, we don't want you to miss out on, on receiving prayer. Maybe there's a difficult situation you're about ready to walk into this week, and uh, you need some prayer about that. We want to agree with you and uh, just believe that God's going to help direct your steps today. Come on, let's worship.